Scientists in Egypt just made a terrifying discovery inside the Sphinx. There is a strong indication that the readings provided by Casey were accurate, particularly in regards to the dating of the Sphinx and the pyramids. It is a source of great pride to have uncovered the first mystery surrounding the Great Pyramid. When people think of ancient Egypt, the pyramids undoubtedly come to mind as the country's most prominent and popular attraction. The Great Sphinx of Giza, an impressive monument with the body of a lion and the head of a man wearing a pharaoh's headdress, is considered one of the earliest examples of ancient Egyptian architecture. While the Great Pyramid of Egypt is believed to have been built around 4,500 years ago during the 4th dynasty, the Great Sphinx is thought to even be older. This colossal stone beast holds many secrets, and there is speculation about what may lie beneath it. Scientists, archaeologists, and Egyptologists have been engaged in debates regarding the Sphinx's true age. Despite its renowned status as Egypt's national symbol and one of the world's most famous landmarks, the mystery surrounding the Sphinx's age continues. According to popular belief, the monolith is believed to be around 4,500 years old and was constructed for the king of Egypt's fourth dynasty, who reigned from 2603 to 2578 BC. The king's pyramid is the second tallest among the Giza pyramids, ranking behind his father Khufu's Great Pyramid. In order to compensate for its smaller size, the pyramid of this king, named Khafre, was built at a higher elevation and surrounded by a more elaborate complex featuring various statues, including the Sphinx. Some people, however, dispute the notion that the Sphinx was built for Khafre, despite its location within the generally recognized complex associated with him. There are no contemporary inscriptions explicitly linking Khafre with a statue, a fact pointed out by certain Egyptologists as early as the mid-19th century. Over the years, different researchers have attributed the Sphinx to Khafre's father, Khufu, as well as another of Khufu's sons named Jedifri. Recently, a new theory has emerged suggesting that the origins of the statue date back much further, approximately 12,000 years ago. Proponents of this theory highlight significant erosion on the limestone near the top of the Great Sphinx, claiming that such erosion on limestone requires rainfall dating back to around 7,000 BC, thereby dating the Sphinx accordingly. The hypothesis that the Sphinx was built by an advanced society prior to the ancient Egyptians is intriguing but controversial. Most experts still support the traditional dating of the Sphinx to the time of Khafre. They argue that the new theory fails to explain all the evidence. The Sphinx was carved from limestone on the Giza Plateau, which erodes quickly, making it appear older than its actual age. The erosion could have been caused by water drainage beneath the ground or flooding from the Nile rather than rainfall. Architectural and geological evidence backed by research from organizations like the Ancient Egypt Research and the Association Era supports the conclusion that the Sphinx and its temple were part of Khafre's pyramid complex and were among the last structures to be completed. Some researchers suspect that the Egyptian government may be hiding information from the world, possibly related to a hidden room beneath the Sphinx known as the Hall of Records. Now let's introduce you to Edgar Cayce. Edgar Cayce, also known as the Sleeping Prophet, was an American psychic and healer renowned for his accurate remote diagnosis of ailments and other psychic abilities. During one of his trances, Cayce made a remarkable claim about the Sphinx, stating that it and the pyramids were constructed around 10,490 BC. There is evidence suggesting that Cayce's readings were accurate, which would also validate his dating of the Sphinx and the pyramids. Casey provided numerous readings on the Sphinx until his death in 1945. According to these readings, the Sphinx was connected to the ancient civilization of Atlantis, which some believe existed in the past. Casey maintained that Plato's Atlantis was not merely a myth and even incorporated information from the Egyptian priesthood into his writings, specifically mentioning the Tamirs and the Critus. Plato suggests that Atlantis existed during a golden period in ancient Egypt. If Casey's readings about Atlantis are accurate, could the Sphinx possibly be a remnant of this ancient civilization? Another Casey prophecy adds to this potential connection. Casey dreamt that there was a chamber beneath the Sphinx's pole holding the Hall of Records from Atlantis. In his dream, Casey believed he had a direct connection to Atlantis. When Atlantis was about to be submerged, its inhabitants understood the importance of preserving these records and hiding prehistoric information. 
David Wilcox, an expert on ancient civilizations, also supports this idea. The goal is to find the original Hall of Records beneath the Sphinx, which could be considered an ancient version of Google and Atlantean Internet. This discovery could reveal that human history on Earth is much older than previously believed. The Sphinx Exploration Project, launched by the Edgar Cayce Foundation 45 years later, aimed to uncover hidden chambers below the Sphinx, leading to the Hall of Records. Surprisingly, they were allowed to drill holes beneath the Sphinx in search of this chamber. They drilled eight holes but found no definitive evidence. The Egyptian army intercepted them at the end. Despite being close to their goal, they did discover anomalies beneath the Sphinx that could potentially be chambers. The Hall of Records legends mention important machinery, technology, and libraries sealed in this specific room. The project concluded there, but in March of 1993, a mechanized robot discovered a small door made of marble or limestone with two copper knobs at the end of a narrow shaft. Following the discovery, Rudolf Gattenbrink, a robotics engineer from Munich, was prohibited from continuing the exploration and accessing the door. The Egyptian antiquities authorities justified their decision by citing Gantenbrink's alleged breach of archaeological regulations when he disclosed the news to the British press in April of 1993. Dr. Rainer Stadelman, the director of the German Archaeological Institute in Cairo, supported the Egyptian authorities and criticized Gantenbrink's press activities. She believed that the discovery was insignificant, stating that there was nothing behind the door and that it was not a significant finding. Dr. Mohamed Bakr, the president of the Supreme Council of Antiquities, even went as far as suggesting it was a hoax, claiming that the robot couldn't fit through the small opening of the shaft. Dr. Bakr accused the German scientist of lacking the necessary approvals from the Egyptian antiquities authorities for the exploration. Despite the official explanation, Dr. Bakr was later dismissed from his position, and Dr. Noor Eldin assumed his role in June of 1993. Dr. Bakker, the chief inspector of the Giza Pyramid Plateau, mentioned a connection with a pyramid-related mafia that had been active for the past two decades. Amid allegations of misconduct and fraudulent activities, Dr. Bakker, who chose not to disclose his full name, expressed his desire to have the matter investigated by the prosecutors, but his request was denied. Meanwhile, Dr. Hawass, who traveled to the United States, proclaimed the discovery of the door as a significant find in Egypt and believed it could potentially contain more important items. Dr. Hawass was later reinstated at the Giza Pyramids in early 1994. On the other hand, Gattenbrink offered his robot to the Egyptians and even trained an Egyptian technician to operate the machinery and unlock the entrance. However, the Egyptian authorities declined the offer, stating that they were currently occupied with other matters. What do you think Hawass and his team found that they didn't want the world to know about? You can tell us in the comments section down below, and we ask you to subscribe to our channel for more such content.